All right, guys. So for the first guest on the Feeble Minded Podcast, we have Nick Sasa. Feeble Minded? Feeble Minded Podcast, yeah. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> I told you that. You knew that already. All right. So Nick Sasa, if you know who he is, he's probably your favorite skateboarder already. Definitely and not. If you don't know him, uh, he will be soon. So I grew up skating with Nick. I probably know him for what? Probably almost 20 years now. Well, I mean, I met you when I was five or four, four or five. When were we yeah. in kindergarten? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I guess five. So like thir- 21 years, about something like that. Yeah, you were always the cool kid. I wanted to be like. Really? Kind of. I mean, you were sitting at like, what was her name? The kindergarten teacher. Miss Wild? No, I think it was, I want to say Asmin or whatever. Oh, Asmin, yeah. You were at the the bad table, which color color coordinated was the red table. <laughs> and I remember she sat me at the yellow table because she thought I was a good kid. And then I started like chucking pencils across the room just yeah, so she would sit me at the table with you. And uh, I forget the other kids that were there, but they all seemed pretty chill. That's well, so funny. I feel like I would have never thought that like I was a cool kid. I always felt like I was a nerd or like some like kind of like the almost the polar opposite of that. Well, I mean, as far as everybody else is my choice of being friends. For in you. That, and in that kindergarten class, no, it was like you were bust. <laughs> I was always just in so much trouble, like every second. Oh, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. No, you were definitely uh <laughs> it was exciting to be friends with you in our youth. Hundred percent. So funny. I don't really remember like it's like that was so blurry that time period. When do you remember like actually starting to be friends or hanging out like later on? You know what I mean? So it was kindergarten we met and I want to say we really didn't start, or at least, like, our parents really didn't, like, know that we were friends or knew each other until maybe, fuck, I don't even, I don't even know. Yeah. It was like, maybe we'll just say with skating, because that's, like, when I kind of remember it. I remember, like, See, starting. I don't even remember that. I remember your dad really wanted you to play basketball. <laughs> yeah. Like, that was your thing. Yeah. And you were good at it, but in general, like, you weren't allowed to skateboard. Until you played your basketball games. And yeah. then your dad would let you skate. That's true. I completely forgot that. Yeah. yeah, they really wanted me to like play sports and like do that. And then I just remember being out of Fireman's Park by myself or the other fucking random kooks that we skated with in Lindenhurst. And then, uh, yeah, That's they fun. were all really like not in it. You know, they were just in it to be like a better, part of the uh, thing right going or on. like better than the next person, so to speak. But then they all found weed and drugs way too early. And, and girls. Then, I don't know if it was so much girls. Some of no. them were pretty ugly. I guess that's more of as you, you get older, the girls start creeping in there, distracting. More or less. Skating. Well, uh, so how did you get into skating? I know you rollerbladed before you You're really going to call me out like that. <laughs> Fuck you. First, you're going to stick me in this pink chair and you get the fucking gray one. Like you try to make all your people feminine. Uh, anyway, no. No, it's nice. It's, to clarify. No. Um, no, when I started, uh, like, all right, you had basketball. I had uh, ice hockey. Okay. And then I got injured with ice hockey. And thinking of other things to do, I ended up playing, like, after I healed up, I got into roller hockey. Fruit rooting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, go on. Piece please. of shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, roller hockey for, like, a brief moment. And then, yes, I did have roller blades on when I went to that first skate park that was out here, 516. And then that changed real quickly thanks to Louis Rivera, who was the dude yeah. that we all looked up to in skating. Louis, we miss you, or at least I do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if necessarily he was just really into my mom or whatever, or he just really thought I had like something. But yeah, I remember he looked at me and he was like, yo, take those off and get a skateboard. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm down. And then my... I'm trying to think what timeline it was because I think this is when I was living off uh, Tremont or whatever. That was the other side of the tracks over there. Okay. And, you know, it was like a three apartment house, you know, like house that they rented out apartments. Yeah. And we all shared the garage. And um, I remember there was like a piece of shit Hobie Nash sports authority board or whatever that was in the garage. And I started playing around with that. And then I think my dad before you know he passed he was like asked because my dad really never cared what i like i did as long as i was like having fun doing something yeah like he was the one that initially got me into ice hockey and everything and he was stoked because i was like you know fast and i had a lot of fun like he just wanted you to be into something right and then i remember like it was like i think a christmas or whatever he got me like the whole setup and then uh 
I forget what. What was your first board? Fuck, I don't remember. I want to say it was a. No, no, actually, it was a. It was a Bucky Lassick birdhouse. Really? Yeah, green wheels. Damn, it was a good one. Solid green wheels. I think the coolest thing though, (laughs) out of like everything about that time, was um, I actually did get my first board. Had a set of indies. Really? Yeah, that was like. I was always wondering why. I was like, wonder if skateboards are always heavy like this when I was younger. Because I was like, I fucking can't lift this thing with just my legs. And yeah. Then, um, yeah, it feels so heavy like when you first start skating. Yeah, it was it's really like so it hard was really to move. In, yeah. I think Louis was the one that initially was like, yo, you should start off with these. And then he got me like, or he gave me like an old set of ventures or something. Mm. And that was at the skate park. But basically, after that point, the rollerblades came off. And then I just stuck with skating the entire time. That's funny. Yeah, I remember just coming like, when I started skating, I remember you were already pretty good. Like you were doing tray flips and like kick flip five O's on little curbs and stuff like that. I don't in town, and I, I just remember like running out and like trying to keep up with you. And everyone would be like that big crowd, you know, would be yeah, like you caught in up town. quick because there was those other kids that were, I don't know what it was. Like I admit, like when I was, I admit it was sketchy, but I read this. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, Something happened with like watching Louie and Scanyo and all those sauce dudes at 516 to where, I mean, we didn't have EA skate or anything like that that these fucking 11 teen year olds have these days. So yeah. it was like way <laughs> different to like, you know, perceive or see skateboarding. And at 516, for us, or for me at least, it was cool to see what, you know, like everybody was doing. Yeah. Like, I've even, talked about that before where it's like, being in a place that blows out your perspective and shows you like what's possible on a skateboard yeah. helps you get better, you know, because yeah. you're just like, oh, I could do that one day, you know. But before that, it didn't really exist. Right. <laughs> I mean, he's probably totally not gonna like that I'm gonna name drop, but Steve Fletch was really good. He was doing shit that like I. Well, first of all, he was really angry when he couldn't do something. The board would go across the fucking skate park. <laughs> That was always like I thought that was cool. I yeah. didn't know that was like the not cool thing to do. Sorry, Steve. It was cool um, back then, I think. But no, I don't he, know. what I didn't know was everything he was doing was switch. I had mm. no fucking idea what switch was. Yeah. So he was like doing like either like switch back tails or some like switch flip five oh backside five oh on like the low box or whatever. And I thought it was regular. I had no idea. I'm still blown away. I was yeah. blown away completely. But <laughs> yeah. it was like watching that and then I believe Scanio was the one balanced out back nose grinds. Mm. Izzo was my age, and I had no idea because he was skating like a full grown man. I I've known him or like he was around for so long, and when he was like twelve, I thought he was like twenty two. Right? Yeah, yeah he's, he's always been older. That dude. He hung out with older dudes. No, he just like, skated <laughs> older. Like he that skated dude, older. Yeah, that dude was always so good. And I don't even know when he started. You should get him on here so you can get the fucking That's bottom good line. Because either way. Bobby was always really good. Like, we were his age, and he was already on the sauce team. Yeah. Fucking killing it. Yeah. And, but anyway, balanced out backside nose grinds, like, winning style. Mm. Saw him, Scanio, and Corso. Corso was doing really good shit back then. He was one of my favorites. But yeah. that was my first thing of, like, you know, taking in skateboarding, was watching all those dudes. And then Davis was another one. He came in later as far as, like, he saw what Louis was, like, you know, Skating with Louis and Louis and he asked Louis like who the fuck is this kid and Louis like yo he's good, and then they both started taking me everywhere and throwing me on like stupid mm. shit like oh here's a eleven stair jump on it, cool. So do you feel like them taking you out kind of like hundred percent your yeah what's that it was where uh, you were heading. I don't know if it was where I was heading, but it was always cool to be around people that knew what they were doing because it was able to like help you along yeah and learn quicker so. All right, back to, I guess, where I was flipping in and you were just getting in. Yeah. Um, I saw that and thought, like, okay, so it's possible as far as, like, okay, this is what I have to do to do that. Mm. And then, yeah, you came in, but it was cool because you saw what I was doing and you were instantly like, okay, I got to do this. Yeah. Well, I was so far behind and I feel like it sacrificed my style Mm -hmm. when I was younger because I just didn't. Like, I was just like, I have to catch up, like, trick-wise or, like, level-wise. So I didn't really – I kind of skipped over the whole style thing, you know? I mean, well – and I mean, obviously, everyone has a style. It's like – but I just – I'm more stoked now. (laughs) Like, okay, we're in our fucking early 30s. Yeah. I want to say mid already, but I keep forgetting how fucking old I am every day I wake up. (laughs) Um, It's sick now to see that, 
like clearly I'm not skating every day anymore. Like I'll hold on to a board for the whole fucking year and then like still skate it the following year, like not care, like whatever, just play yeah. around at the range or whatever. But um I forgot where I was going with that. Um yeah, I honestly forgot where you were going to. <laughs> what were you saying? You were saying about oh my style. Right. Yeah, okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um we got back, don't worry. <laughs> so when you first started, um gonna go ahead and say you were a fucking waterfall of a mess you were just like popping everything and would, hoping to god you were gonna land on i would it. hit the ollie button too you, would, uh, you actually you, pointed it out to me that did i, I really was hitting the ollie button <laughs> and then i like got so pissed and i like thought about it and then i stopped doing it so it was, yeah yeah but dude there were a couple times you almost sent me home upset though like the time you nolly big spin the four before me that fucking <laughs> I was like really upset. Yeah, no, I think you went home crying that day. I'm I may sure. have teared up a little bit, hundred percent. I was like super bummed because yeah, it was such a dick it thing was to my do, trick. Yeah. I was doing it first, and then you were like, "All right, I'm gonna do it." <laughs> Fucking yeah, that was funny. But no, I was gonna say now with your style, like now that you're you spent whatever the time you spent over the past couple of years getting full force back into skating. Yeah, not like I mean, not like how we were like skating with others or looking to others to get stoked you just on your own went fucking full sober yeah. and only cared about skating and i'm more stoked now to see how throughout throughout the years your style has progressed into what it is now in your 30s like watching you skate tranny is fun as shit watching you flip your board is fun as shit and even when you were in Cali on that last stop, you did the nollie backside flip down the whatever yeah. the staircase was. Yeah. Dude, none of it was like you popped, caught, like pop, flip, caught, and landed. And it's nothing like even like clearly how you were when we first started to where it is now. It's like. Yeah. Well, it's weird because I feel like as you get older, you get Richie Banks says this, your skate IQ gets higher, you know? And like, but it's funny because now I think about I want to do a video part. And being 31, or 32, actually, it's... Um, but then where did Richie's IQ go? Because he just looks like he's <laughs> fucking at the gym most of the time. That's true. No, but <laughs> Sorry, it's like, you can, like, now I, I could sculpt a video part better. Like, I could see the whole project, and like, oh, I want to do this, and look this way, and like, I get the whole thing, as opposed to when I was a kid, it was just like, going out, camera... I remember I tried to do throw that. Throw it all together, work. and hope for the best. You know what I mean? So now it's like, I don't know, you kind of have more awareness to pick what you're doing, what you're into, at least yeah, for see, me. I just wish you know? now with skating, because like, I mean, Tranny's still there. I got like, that's like sandbox style. Like I'll always remember everything I do on there. Yeah. But flipping my board, well, tray flips still work. Thank God. Because I spent so much You'll time. You'll never lose those. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, that's like you have fucking, the button. I, I, yeah, I got, a, I got a button. <laughs> so, but kick flips are fucking really hard. Mm. <laughs> um, switch heels still work. That's cool. Okay. Um, but yeah, a lot of flip tricks are not really there, but also just pushing in general. Like I lose so much fucking energy hauling ass at something because I can't do anything unless I'm going a certain speed. Yeah. It like, and if you don't skate a lot and then push like pretty hard for a bit, it wears you out and your muscles get tired, and shit, you know, in the, in the push. Well, actually it's funny. The push legs fine. It's the, the forward leg where mm. all the main balance is. Yeah. I'll lose energy or like stamina. Yeah, it'll get, weak. That, it'll get yeah. super weak. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, like, I mean, skating's still fun. It's just uh, can't really jump down shit anymore. Not with that attitude. You're right, but I have a different attitude on life. Yeah, it's It's just... (laughs) Honestly, it's pretty reckless of me at my age to be jumping down stuff. But then again, it depends where your head's at because people like... Well, it's like what Gino said. A lot of the pros, like Manny, I don't know how old Manny is, Manny Santiago, but like... I think he's like a year older than us. Okay, that's what I mean. He's like full in the game like at the level of everyone left. else that's what i'm saying and so it just depends how you look at it like those guys yeah they do it for their job and never stopped and well, I if think you Gino... do and you get a regular job you risk losing your job going out and like jumping down stuff so it depends where your head's at you know gino probably said it best one day we were skating that um where's that fucking uh that manual pad to ledge it's at the post office and i want to say like Beth Page, Plain View, or whatever. Okay, it is. yeah, Plain View, I think. So, I'm skating there with him one day. We were talking about like getting older and skating or whatever, and he was saying how he's like, you know, 
he would still jump down something, but he's got to have that mentality of like, oh, this is going to be fun. Not like, oh, I'm going to get fucked up or how many tries is it going to take? Yeah. Like, it's got to be instantaneous. This is going to be fun or he's not jumping. And yeah. that I completely understand. Like right now, if I was to go to like Nassau, there's a part of me that I know because I mean I love that rail. That's yeah. like one of my favorite rails. To one of the best rails. It is, and I know that like I go there now, even at the age I am now, like part of me is gonna be like, oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> but then there's the fucking old forty hours a week work medical, not trying yeah. to fuck myself up. That's gonna be like, eh, what if I tweak an ankle? That even just having that in your head too could like just throw you off, like off oh, your yeah. confidence and like stuff like that. So yeah, I'm it's just definitely. not trying it. <laughs> just not going for it. All right, so let's see. So how did you get your first sponsor? How did that happen? Oh, and who which, was? Which it? I'm one? not even sure if I know who. I was it gonna is. say which ones, the ones that count or the ones that don't. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Like, I don't know. The first time you really felt sponsored by someone, I don't know. Maybe. Probably Bragan, the America's okay. hookup. Yeah, no, thank Joe Bragan. Yeah, right. Thank you. America counts. Yeah, there you um, go. Well, it was a bunch of us. You know, like you ended up on S at some point too, and then Hammerschlag got on America. I think even little Alex and little Matt were getting like some kind of hookup flow, but I think America was probably like, "Wow, this is cool! Like I'm actually getting shit yeah. to go skate," and um. I don't even remember what year that was. I want to say it was like 02, 03. It was before we left high school. Okay. So, or if my timeline's correct. I don't yeah. know if the map's right or wrong. Somewhere around Somewhere that. around yeah. there. It's all blur. Um, <laughs> then soon after that, uh, Red Bull was hooking us all up back then as well. Um, mm -hmm. But did you like send America a sponsor tape? Never or? sent a tape to anybody ever. Ever? Ever. Interesting. Not even Bragan? Not even Bragan. So what, they just hear about you like at a skate shop or like something like that? Basically. I remember he came in a sauce one day and it was Pete, Louie, and... Sauce is a skate shop, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, special sauce, rest in peace. Some people might not know that. Yeah, um, special sauce. Uh, yeah, watch the special <laughs> sauce ceremony video. It's on YouTube. You get to know or learn everything. About what we're talking yeah, it's about. Long Island history right there. A lot of the people you um, mentioned have parts in that video. Well, it was the first video. First video, I think I... Well, no, there was the 4 one video that I got for whatever. Good old 4 one Good old 4 one <laughs> But no, the special sauce video had basically every name I dropped at the beginning of this interview all had parts. And yeah. They were all fucking great. Super mm -hmm. awesome. Um, but I want to say Bragan came to sauce to do his usual like rep work, you know, like show off what's new. And then Pete was going to do the buying or whatever usually. But I want to say it was Pete, Louie, and Davis were all there at the same time. And they were all telling Bragan, like, yo, if there's a kid you really need to hook up, this is the kid. And then Bragan was like, well, what makes you so <laughs> special? And I was like, I I don't even remember what I said. I think I just said I'll go for it. Yeah. You know, whatever. And then they made me, like, skate in front of the store for, like, five minutes. Yeah, with a couple the, flat ground tricks Yeah, it was a couple of flat yeah. ground tricks. There was even, like, the little flat bar that they, like, brought out or whatever. So I did, like... Yeah, was, like, I'm good. definitely a back lip. No, definitely a back feeble. lip. No, I <laughs> actually, yeah, feeble. And yeah. then, no, back then I was actually really good at, like... That's, the One thing I remember is when I first saw you skating, and the way you would do a feeble on a fat, flat bar blew my mind. And I was like, I have to learn the feeble. Like, the, you just sat on it forever, and I was like is that trick yeah no i created yeah. the feeble here alone. oh no, so kidding. good <laughs> hey tricks do get like contagious like if someone does a trick in an area or a town skate park in the crew like everyone kind of starts doing it it was the easiest trick to hold on to <laughs> like you know i mean as far as like what, what did you because you came up with it i didn't even come up with it i want to say it was like years later where like somebody asked you about a feeble your answer was like yeah you just never let it drop never let it stop yeah don't let it drop don't let it stop <laughs> i don't even know if it makes sense but it sounded funny. when you're doing it it makes <laughs> yeah. sense if you don't know how to do it it won't make any sense to you yeah but um but yeah so that's what happened with bragan and then um he from then was like every other month or like every month he was like sending me a pair of kicks mm. and then I don't know if this story is accurate. Somebody can fucking tell me if I'm wrong, but Supra had start or no crew 
came out, you know, okay. had Reynolds and all those other dudes on it. And, um, uh, so Reynolds had all the tight pants and all that shit, which was really cool back then. Yeah. You know, I wore tight pants. Everybody wore tight oh, yeah. pants, like whatever. But then Supra came out as a company and it was under crew. So then they were trying to, I think, take Reynolds from America. And I remember Bragan partially telling me about this. I could be butchering the story completely, considering it was like well over like 15 years ago now. Yeah. But I want to say he stopped hooking everybody up but Ross, because Ross was the only one with an America tattoo. <laughs> yeah. That was like his first tattoo he got on his back. Yeah, I remember that. So he stopped hooking all of us up, and his excuse or reason was he's like, oh... Well, they're using the flow budget to pay for the lawyer to keep Reynolds on America. Or some mm. shit like that. Okay. So certain people weren't getting their shoes, me included. And then I remember Ross giving me his like old washed up shoes that were like a size seven and a half. And I'm like cramming my eight and a half foot in these little shoes, yeah. which eventually my foot shrank to like a seven Curling and a half. Curling toes and up. Yeah, dude, I know total. all about that. So, <laughs> but I skated them anyway because like I needed shoes. And then I want to say it was Seltzer. Good looks on Seltzer for this. Because Seltzer came up to me and was like, yo, you're really not getting kicks right now? I was like, no. He's like, all right, well, you're on Vans. And it was like, mm. sick. And then from pretty much the rest of my uh, existence in skateboarding, it was Vans. Interesting. Okay. So then, so you were on America, and then we were filming for, what video was around that time? I guess Strong Island? It, does that even, I don't even know. I mean, because you want to technically- like that. Like, Downwa or James Ramirez, I mean, the whole time was filming New York. We had no idea. That's true. So, technically, it's all about the same time. But, mm. uh, yeah, I guess, like, the first video that was put out was probably Strong Island, where fucking Joe Face had a horrendous choice in music. <laughs> well, it's that little kid. It's like, I don't know. I'm really happy Joe grew up. Joe, you're killing it, but you definitely did not know what you were doing <laughs> earlier on. <laughs> Yeah, but that's it. That's what it takes, you know. You just start going for it, shit, and then eventually, you know, you get better as time goes on. Yeah. Joe, those videos were so much fun, though. Oh, yeah, filming them and everything, all the times you know, and memories we had. Yeah, it was Like, super we fun. were so intense about filming a skate video, and not a lot of other people were. Some A couple, a couple of different crews, but, like, in general. And it's weird were you to with think me? about, you know. Just thinking about another memory throughout that was around that time, but we went out with Rirez. I think it was you that was with me. Uh, we went to the West Islip High School late at night with the generator, and we got locked on the property. Were you with me that night? Yes, you were. Right? Yeah, I was there. So, <laughs> for people that don't know, James had kind of like a no lock doors issue when he was <laughs> younger. So, mm -hmm. and I guess security didn't know we were on the property, so clearly they were doing a great job. Uh, we were skating in the back all fucking night. It was like two, three in the morning and they locked the gates to the school. And this is back with the Mitsubishi power, whatever the fucking, that amazing yeah. SUV that Rirez drove into the ground. Um, he like freaked out like, no, these people won't keep me locked in. No. <laughs> and he put like his truck to the fence and then floored it. And the fence just fucking like the Shattered. chain snapped. It just flew right open. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Dude, yeah. that was fucking hysterical. Oh my God. We were all dying. Yeah. We're, I remember just sitting there like, Oh, we're, we're stuck in here. <laughs> you know, it's like, a, he just pulls up to the fence. Well, I mean, I yeah. was thinking like, shit, what do we do at this point? Do we skate home from West Islip? Do we just leave James here? Yeah. Like, what do we do? Cause I mean, clearly he's older, <laughs> even though technically like he's older, but he's actually younger than us. Well, if you know James, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was pretty funny. All right. So I got to, I'm going to segue into Instagram and skateboarding because we didn't have it at all. We didn't have it. Right. So like we would film video parts, you know, and you would, that's the only way you would really like get to see skateboarding. Instagram ruined you know. whatever I would have had with a career in skating. hundred <laughs> percent. Like, Whatever towards the end of whatever you want to call I had in skating, like whatever flow sponsors or am whatever I was riding for, like they always like expected you to put like clips out on a regular basis or they wanted you to go to a contest every year. Yeah. I fucking hated contest. Well, same. I was good at them when I was younger and I looked like ah, I'm the center of attention. Right. But, like, you know, I grew out of that at some point and 
I realized like, yo, this is fucking nerve wracking. Like I hate being around yeah. or trying to do the best that I could do in front of a bunch of people. Or once again, like, you know, young kids that fucking have like generational differences and how they grew up in skating. Yeah. And yeah, it, it just, it was fucking nerve wracking. So towards the end, like when they're expecting that out of you or for you to do like even f- one to two contests a year even though they're expecting like five or six yeah it was just like fuck this i don't want i don't want to do that so i i just stopped caring but yeah instagram is i mean i have one i don't fucking don't post anything i go on it and look at other people's shit yeah like you know it's about it yeah it's crazy because i was talking the other day i think with maybe joe face about like filming a full-length video it's like why would a company pay how much is it? I don't know, $30,000 to go on like a small tour with a few guys and make like a 30, you know, minute video, hour long video. I don't know what they're making. A three you know what minute I mean? video that they'll put out on the internet. <laughs> That's yeah, what I yeah, mean. Yeah. It's crazy, you know? And, and then just to think all that time and money just to be, could be used on posting on Instagram and getting more exposure. You know, it doesn't have that same impact maybe on your life, like a, a big project and something like that was well crafted but it does reach a lot of people you know and i don't know the internet is clearly incredible you can find anything you need on it and clearly even with skateboarding now second anything gets done it goes right out on the internet yeah i think how like thrasher does it i'm not really like i don't have a problem with it like they'll release like certain videos on the thrasher website that's cool yeah but I think anything that just comes out like via YouTube or Instagram or whatever, I'm not really that stoked. You know, like it doesn't really get me like pumped or whatever. I have more fun watching the kids get hurt Instagram or the little kids get hurt Instagram. Watching these little kids like run into a fucking screen door they don't see or like, you know, some kid getting like a reverse. His other one, Scooter Kid got a reverse scorp the other day. It was so bad. <laughs> that was fucking... Like I, I get more stoked off of watching that shit yeah. than some fucking new random schmuck doing like a fucking, <laughs> I don't know, like fuck, like a sentence trick. Yeah. You know, and like that shit doesn't a get me. Sentence pa- trick. Yeah, like, hobby quality trick. I can't. Like, oh, he did like fucking kick flip or no, tray flip, front nose grind, nolly backside flip out to fake each. No, dude, you can go on forever. It's like, I don't get pumped off that. I understand people are tech people and they do get stoked off that. Yeah. No disrespect to them. But I don't. Hmm. I get more stoked on a dude doing like a fucking full speed kickflip yeah. than that. Well, all right. So do you, have you ever watched any like you um, skateboarding on YouTube or like YouTube skaters at all? Like any of those type of people? No. No? You. It's not into it. Me? <laughs> that's about it what do you think of me on youtube like wh- when i first started what did you think it was fucking awkward <laughs> for me to watch knowing that you were the kid like and i don't know if anybody knows this about you but you didn't pick up a cell phone until pretty much like two years ago and then here you are you have a podcast yeah so once again i, I had no feel- social media no cell phone you thought the government nothing was following no you. credit cards i yeah. was just completely off the grid pretty much 100 yeah. percent. you never stayed on it or never were on it in the yeah. first place and then somewhere after your sobriety you picked up a cell phone i remember <laughs> i had you had like burner fo- let's call them burner phones even though you weren't a drug dealer at all yeah. ever but like you had burner phones i had like seven everyone di- says this. i had like seven different <laughs> chads in my phone yeah. Throughout the years. Like, you know, and I just kept saving them as like, like I remember the original was Chad. Yeah. Then it became new Chad. And then after that, it was new Chad numbers. <laughs> I, I think it went up to like five or six, maybe seven. Yeah. I, I feel like, I don't know. Yeah. I just get like a prepaid phone or like, you know, I have 20 bucks and get a phone for like a couple of minutes and like end up losing the number, or having no money speaking or something. Of, I'm like, yeah. speaking of 20 bucks, it just reminded me of something else. Like you remember when we were kid kids, right? Like, and our parents, like our birthdays are so close to one another. Like you're like, what? Like 13 days before me or some shit. Yeah, something like that. So our parents would always give us like 20 bucks to give to one another. And then we realized 13 days later, you were just giving the $20 Same back. 20 bucks back. Yeah. So yeah. we just kind of stopped giving each other's gifts. I was talking about that with uh, the lady the other day. It was really funny. <laughs> That's funny. Do you miss going out and filming video parts? 
Because that to me was like the funnest experience, like having like a a project that we were working on or something. It depends. Constantly hitting spots. I think I miss... I think I just miss the South. Like straight up, like anywhere between South Carolina, Georgia... I miss be- going on trips and skating there because every day I woke up there, I was always interested in skating every day. Like, clearly, I was living in California for the time I was. And growing up here on the East Coast, it fucking, you know, rains somewhere between, like, two to three days out of the week, mostly. When we were younger, yeah. the weather was pretty shitty. And then out there, if you just feel like sitting inside one day, you're a fucking lazy pile of shit. It's like, I'm sorry. I just fucking <laughs> felt like sitting here and watching Netflix or yeah. whatever. So I couldn't get down with that out there. Like that's something that always kind of drove me nuts, drove me nuts. Yeah. So I have no problem. Like even here or at least when I was younger, it was like, Oh, we got a good day. Let's go skate. Yeah. So that like, Take it was, advantage of it. It was more yeah. like building a stoke for a good day. Yeah. So yeah. It builds up the energy. You get like a little more psyched. Yeah. Um, Damn, that's funny. My actually two favorite days for my trip across the United States, 17 and 18, North Carolina, South Carolina. There, you were killing it then, too. Those are like the two, like, I don't know if it's because it was those states or anything, but that was like trick. my two favorite days. You did a kickflip, blunt kickflip. My first trick in, trick out variation in my life that day, ever. I don't know. Yeah. I want, I want to explore this. It's that true. When, I, Maybe yeah, on transition. It, anywhere. Yeah, I'm not. I'm I don't not, know. My, not brain, my brain's not gonna yeah, work yeah. that far anyway. But yeah, but you did a kickflip, blunt kickflip when you were petrified for years of even doing a kickflip. <laughs> and blunt fakies. And blunt fakies. Yeah. yeah, definitely. You never went for that trick. But yeah, switch ones no. didn't bother you, but regular ones you were fucking yeah. petrified of. For some reason, it just <laughs> never like worked. Like it, I can do them now. It just doesn't feel comfortable. Still, yeah. I always wish to this day. And I'll never be able to do it because, like, I know how to do it the way Louie did it, the way Davis did it. Like, you pop out, you float in. Mm. I've always admired to this day, and he still does them to this day, the Rons, how he does oh. the fucking yeah. fake Emmanuel. All it. I Rons, actually, you are the scariest motherfucker yeah. to watch do that, but you do it so well and so clean. <laughs> yeah, there's know. a couple of people I've met throughout my life that do it like that, like they manual it in. And it almost seems like it could be more consistent. If I'm doing that, yeah. I'm hanging up and eating shit, hundred <laughs> percent. That's like an elbow and the whole re- like back into the fucking flat bottom. That's funny, man. Never be able to do it. All right, so let's see where we where we leave off in your skate. What we call career? I don't know. I don't even want to call it that. All right, a mess so of what substance. It was. Substance skateboards. Harley. Yeah, yeah. Harley was a, a fun guy to ride for. Or at least, I mean, he's. He's definitely clearly came around. He's a family vegan man now or whatever. He's a business owner of... Uh, you know, Nooklin. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Nooklin. I'll give him a little hype. So um, <laughs> he he's doing his thing now. But yeah, needless to say, back then he was a fucking piece of shit. That team <laughs> was so funny worried. though, man. That it whole was, time that of, era was just... It was really fun. It was fun. It was a lot of fun, especially like meeting a lot of the dudes like Ralph. Yeah. Fucking... Ralph changed my life. I don't know for the better, <laughs> probably not, but he's still I Ralph. Know. I mean, he's I still Ralph. It. I that haven't seen or was... spoken to him, oh, but like man. I saw a picture of him on fucking Facebook the other day. He's drinking a Steel Reserve still. Like, dude, <laughs> you're fucking. How are you still doing it? I don't know how to do it. Yeah, but um, yeah, if substance was fun. We, you know, Harley housed us for a little bit. He took us on a couple of trips, but um. I remember throughout that trip, he was like prom- promising us per diem, and he didn't feed us for three days. We were all fucking starving. I shot like, I I got so bummed that I spent my own money on a Roman candle, and when he fucking went and diving, he stopped. He was like, I'm fucking sweating. We need to stop at a hotel. Like, oh, now you're going to get us a hotel. And then first thing he does, he gets to the hotel, and he just jumps right in the pool. So I took the Roman candle. I started shooting it at him. Like, yo, we're hungry. Like, it was pretty funny, but, like... That is funny. I think, like, at the time, like, he didn't know what he was doing. He was just a skateboarder that wanted to be in skateboarding. And then what ended up happening was he ended up getting a team that 
was pretty good. Yeah. Like, not including me, but the rest of everybody else was really good. Yeah, there was some good names on there, man. And then it he was... ended up, like, not knowing what to do with it when technically at a point it could have kind of carried itself. Yeah. So. That's true, because when those promos came out, it was like, it was like a promo that was a full-length video. Everyone was, was so pumped. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> and people, yeah, were into it, man. Even Robert. Robert was fucking, oh, my God, I'll never forget what that dude said when he Robert came Robert Lopez Mont is insane one of the most incredible skateboarders i've ever witnessed firsthand but yeah i mean he would like wake up at like it'd be like 6 a.m and skateboarders generally aren't waking up early and he would just be like i don't know he'd just be like sitting outside of the apartment building like drinking and then by 8 a.m like hitting a gnarly handrail or something i'm like what i remember How are you harley, even doing that harley flew him from puerto rico <laughs> to here to live with us for a little bit but it was like his first week here and he had to go to Woodward as like a visiting pro or whatever, visiting Ann, whatever. And he spent two weeks at Woodward. And I remember he took the bus back and we picked him up at the bus stop because he had no idea where he was going in Brooklyn. Okay. It was 6.30 a.m. And I remember this specifically because Rodney was just moving in with us and Rodney was always an early bird getting his bacon, egg, and cheese and a snap of iced tea. Peach. That's right, Rodney. So... Every morning, like, I'd be doing that with Rodney because we were kind of early birds. Rodney Torres? Yeah. Okay. And um, I remember we went to go pick up Robert, and it's, like, 6.30 a.m., and we're he's sitting at the corner, and he's drinking a six-pack of Red Stripe. And we're like, yo, dude, how was Woodward? He's like, fuck, man, that shit was, like, rehab. I couldn't fucking do anything. <laughs> I actually <laughs> think I remember that. I remember that. He's like, I'm so happy to be drinking this beer right now. Red Stripes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was funny, bro. Wow. Oh, my God. Robert. Yeah, he was wild. Um, so, wait, you mentioned Rodney. So, you went on a trip with Rodney. I went on. Like, across lot, the whole country, pretty much, right? Yeah, me and Rodney did that thing for Maloof. That was, uh, it was fun. So, what and... was it for Maloof? Like, because I don't even know. Me and I was, like, with you. Like, I know the Maloof brothers, they did the Maloof Money Cup. In New York and build yeah. that park, but what did that tour have to do with anything? Like, what I was don't that? know. I still to this really? day really don't know. All I know <laughs> is they paid all of us to go on the road trip for probably about like three months straight to hit every state, get to your local skate shop, hold a contest, and then the winners got something or they could have gone. So like, you guys had ramps? barely i think okay. there was like a bunch of like, we something. had like an element pole jam and hmm. i think an element box we threw together basically we were kind of hoping that any local shop we went to either had a place to go or there was oh, a okay. local local park or whatever we can just like host it at that so this way we didn't have to like oh okay so yeah so you'd show up host a contest in maloof's name just to build hype for them like, Pretty much. What was the? It even I don't like... really think those dudes even knew what they were doing. I think they just had money and they were like, "Yo, skateboarding's really cool. We should invest in that." Yeah, it kind of seemed like that when they were doing the contest. I remember it was a good contest and it was fun. I never but, met yeah. these dudes at all, and I remember this vividly because it was like, I don't know if it was my first trip to Vegas. I think it was my second time, but I remember I would always go there and enjoy the shit out of it. I met with Little Matt, and then the following night I went to Little Darlings and had a blast, drank all night. And then Rodney's like, yo, we're going to the 24-hour cafe. Do you want to meet us for breakfast? I'm like, yeah, let's go. I'm already, like, still drunk from the night before. And <laughs> this, I'm, like, you know, recuperating, eating. And then this guy walks in, hair fucking up on one side, pop, one pop collar on the other, no shoes on. Okay. And I remember just being, like, slosh face. Like, who the fuck is this guy walking in here like it's his fucking living room? And then Rodney smacks me upside my head. He's like, yo, that's Joe Maloof. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yikes. And the dude was actually, like, <laughs> super cool. Like, even though yeah. I was clearly, like, a fucking shithead. Like, oh, yeah. But um, he walks over. He's like, hey, you guys are my road crew, right? I'm like, yeah, it's good to meet you. <laughs> I... Everybody, like, put on the professional voice. I was yeah. just kind of like, it was like the one moment he of my He couldn't life. go back from that. No, yeah. but that was definitely one of the moments where after what I just said, I shut up the entire time. Like, <laughs> Whoops. But uh, dude was super cool. Yo, do you remember the day before you left for that trip? Because that just popped in my head. What do we do? Um, I don't remember. There was this guy that went with you guys that we had just met. 
Dante. Dante. Dante was great. And then we went to this party in our hometown, and we walked. We went like to the bar first. Six cases of beer or something, like 120 beers. Yeah. To this backyard party. I remember it now. And that's yeah. Do you remember? I remember <laughs> sleeping in that backyard. Like we drank all the beers. We drank all the beers. Yeah. Face your fears. Oh fuck. That's, you that's what I was trying to get. <laughs> so if you guys don't know this about Chad, yeah. and could you still do it? I could do it, yeah. You think so? Try we'll to mess find with out, him. Yeah. Ask him to face his fears, and you'll know what it is. But it's really kind of impressive because he's always been able to do it, and anybody else is going to like lose their teeth. So where you stand on your knees, right, on the ground, and you just belly flop. Like you fall over with your arms behind your back and hope to not hit your face on the ground. So there's like a certain technique, and if you don't know how to do it, you will knock your teeth out. So definitely don't try that. I remember I tried um, it once, and my hands immediately went out. Like yeah. I was going to never – I'm not losing this. <laughs> yeah. No way. So we we ended up drinking a lot of beers, probably too many. Did we get any other kooks to do it that night? People were – I think were doing it. It was like a big thing at the party. And then me and Dante attempted to do it from standing up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just That's like right. yeah. Yo, that was and I was just I was like so... shouldering it to the ground, my arms behind my back, just like Oh my god. Yeah. I was so worried for Dante because he had that face piercing too. Like I was like, oh that shit's coming out. <sighs> oh my god. But yeah, I was so drunk. I don't know where the fuck you went. I know Dante I think slept in the garage mm. and then I slept in the backyard on like a table or something. I, I don't. So that, that was a funny fucking. Yeah, that's party. all I remember from that time period. Of, we started the at Mary's Maloof though, trip. right? Probably. We were definitely at Mary's, that's what and we then from there they were like, "Oh, this dude's having a party." We were like, "Yeah, we're going. Yeah, we're gonna fuck shit up." That's funny. And then, all right, so yeah, it's really one of the main memories from that time period. Also, I met up with you in California. You were oh living at that dude Dave's house. Is that where you finished the tour? Uh, it was like you just stayed in Cali. Oh, you're talking like, about what? that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or was that so, separate? Well, no, it was. All right, so <laughs> I gotta remember how you ended up there, but I met up with you. No, in California. I remember now. Yeah. So I had gotten all that money I won in Vegas, plus what they gave me. Okay. Because like I remember Joe Maloof handed me like a fucking lump sum of something, and then like I instantly took it as like invisible money. Yeah. Like this money really doesn't mean anything to me because I just got yeah. it now, and I technically wouldn't have it if you didn't give it to me. So I took that money and I put it on black and I came all the way up. Really? Yeah. So from, no way. I did. I did. So from there, um, <laughs> how, much, how much are we talking here? It was 2,500. And then really? To, yeah. So you went up to 5,000 then? Yeah. And then, I mean, it was all gone by the end of the trip, but like, yeah, that should have gone quick. Uh, I took that because they were like, oh, well, what are you going to do? The trip's going to Canada. I was like, I don't have a fucking passport. I'm not getting out of this country. Mm. So they were like, well, what are you going to do? I was like, all right, so where's where's the trip going after Canada? They were like, we're going to Utah. I'm like, all right, look, I got homies in Utah. I got homies in L.A. Uh, where are we now? We're in Vegas, right? Or no, we were in San Jose. I remember, dude, this is super funny, actually. Right. So it was 3 o'clock in the morning. We were driving back. One of the dudes that we were driving with lived in San Jose or Santa Barbara. No, not Santa Barbara. Fucking Sacramento. Okay. So we're in Sacramento, and it's like 3 o'clock in the morning, and I wake up. And I look out the window and I see like those prison stands, you know, like where, you know, guards would sit and pr pr yeah, whatever. Okay. And I'm like, yo, what prison is that? And he goes, Folsom. I'm like, stop the fucking car right now. Because <laughs> I was the biggest Johnny Cash fan back in the I, mean, I remember. Kind of Even yeah, when yeah. you were a little kid, you had that poster on your wall. I love Johnny. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was like, yo, stop the fucking. They're like, you serious? I'm like, yes. <laughs> I got to be the only asshole that attempted to fucking like. Break, not break in, but like, yo, can I just like yeah, take a photo? Check with you guys? Yeah, check it out. Like, take a photo of you guys. They were like, yo, this this, uh, this prison isn't active. You're not allowed on the property. I'm like, fuck. All right. Well, nope, later. Yeah, 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 that sucked. <laughs> but either way, I was super excited to see Folsom. And then we had, I think, a week off. So we hung out at that dude's house in Sacramento okay. before they went to Vancouver, I think they were doing, as far as the Canada trip. So they were like, what are you going to do? And then the company or the dudes that work for Maloof were like, well, what are you going to do? I'm like, look, I got this money, so I'm fine. Like, don't worry about it. They can go to fucking Vancouver and then I'll just meet them in Utah. And I ended up not really having to spend any of that money because these dudes got me a fucking Greyhound down to L.A. And really? And booked me a flight from L.A. or Long Beach to Utah. Damn. 
which the Greyhound was one of the funniest fucking scenarios of my life because I don't know if people know, but there's a, another prison that's active. I think it's Quinton or whatever. It's active in San, Sacramento area. Okay. But that Greyhound for dudes from like L.A., uh, they ride that Greyhound when they get out of jail. Really? Nice. I didn't know that's this. That's good company. So I walk on to the Greyhound and basically every dude – that got let out that day was on that bus and they're all filling the seats. There's one seat open next to like this chubby blonde chick. I was like, all right, that's safe. I'm going to sit there. Now I sit down and as I sit down, there's a dude just like eyeballing you (laughs) from across the row of the bus. And like just keeps looking at me. So now we're a good, like we didn't even make it three miles on this trip, which mind you like, Sacramento to LA is like five hours or more. Yeah. It's a pretty girthy trip. And this dude, not even three miles, he's like looking at me and he didn't stop looking at me. He just looks at me. He goes, yo, I really like that seat you got there. I'm like, yo, it's fucking yours, bro. Have it. <laughs> and the thing is like, it was all straight from there, except this dude ended up pulling that chick into the bathroom of the Greyhound and no. Yeah, it was really, bad. I dude, I held my piss <laughs> and everything else I had like, I did not touch yeah, that. Yeah, you bag. probably didn't move. You're just like I no. The dude that was I'm next going. to me was actually way chill. I actually uh, I forget it was G something. He had his name, but he was like trying to show me everything he wrote in prison and like yo, if I ever need help in fucking Compton, it's like nah, I think mm-hmm. I'll be all right. Yeah, we'll talk soon. But yeah. towards the end of the bus ride, that dude he was like, yo man, good looks on that seat. Nice. I was like, yeah, dude, it's all you. <laughs> I was fucking. So yeah, he was psyched. From LA, I hung out there for two weeks with like Buckman, Cookie. I, well, ran, I ran through Jordan's so door. Our stories kind of collided there because I went on the road trip where our friend Todd Urich. I was getting to that. Um, oh, okay. Were you? Yeah, I was. Oh, okay. It was just taking way longer. <laughs> so once I got to LA, Todd had asked me, he's like, yo, are you going to be in LA for a while? I'm like, yeah, two weeks. He's like, all right, what do I need? I'm like, you need Chad, you need Rumney. Get in the car. That's why he called me. I never right. really knew why he called me. Right. I was friends with him, but not like. Todd was know. the best. Sit and destroy. <laughs> Rest in peace. Dude, he sit was, and destroy he was, is one of the funniest terms I've ever heard. But the best, the, yeah, he did sit and destroy, but he was always down. It yeah, he matter. did everything. He met everyone, like, talked to everyone. Even that phone he call. Like, that yeah. phone call was like, he's like, all right, you're in LA? I'm like, yeah. He's like, what do I need? I'm like, you need Chad, you need Rumney, and just drive. It's like, what about my Ninja Turtle pillow? I'm like, yeah, dude, bring it. Let's go. So he got in the car, he got you too, and then... He called me up and said, yo, you want to move to, or go to California? Um, I'm leaving in like a half hour. And I was like, <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I'm down. It's like pretty quickly, like instantly, I didn't even ask any questions. I got 300 bucks, like scrambled for it. I might have even borrowed it from a couple of people. Um, got 300 bucks in a backpack, and then we just got in the car. Drove pretty much straight through... Yeah, you guys were there and, in like two and a half days. Yeah, like nonstop through the night. And I think I ran out of money by like Arizona. I'm like stealing, <laughs> you know, uh, beef jerkies down my pants and stuff. You know, I used to be klepto <laughs> when I was a kid. I used to just think it was funny. It but, was, kind of. I mean, unless you're stealing from like a fucking high-end store. But if it's just Sevs, I think you're all right. Yeah, but anyway, so I made it there to California and we started couch surfing at uh, the silent skateboards house and then that's where we kind of collided yeah in that story because now what i said before that were you staying at that house i was i was on the couch um did i run through jordan's door before or after you showed up (laughs) i think that was after was it yeah i think i was there for that you were there yeah so i was really bummed because i love jordan you know or at least like the times that i skated with him i you know he was cool and you know i like skating he's fucking super good yeah cookie was out every day with me and buck but jordan was like I don't know, with some chick and he was really into little Wayne and he never wanted to leave his room. (laughs) And, you know, I was at the house already a fucking week. I saw him come out for a ramen noodle and then go back in and I never saw him again. Mm. So one time, I think Tony was there too. Tony Carr, that kid is the best. Tony. So, uh, yet we all like were getting faded and, you know, I really wanted to hang out with Jordan and he wouldn't want to come out of his room. So I said, fuck it, and I ran through the door. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I think I fell into the door or whatever. I was like, hey, man, we really miss you out here. And he got so mad, dude. He was yeah, he livid. Must have. 
Well, I mean, he really didn't have a door for like a month after that. I think he had to buy a new door. Cause yeah, I remember was... that because one night they had like a big raging party. And I remember like that door was just floating around the party. <laughs> or maybe I like slept <laughs> under the door like it was on the ground and I was like next to it. Oh, I remember that God. door just like floating around. That was so funny. Yeah, that house was pretty wild. I like the roofs, you know, the L.A. The I, got, LA. I got a question for you. Yeah, right. what's the difference of like the vibe of skating California to here? You know, like living New York. It's not really comparable. It's just way different. Like, you know, as I said even earlier, like, you know, we have weather out here. Out there, it's fucking... If it rains out there, it's weird because it never happens. Like, everything's, like, super surreal, sunny, barely cloudy. Yeah. Which I never witnessed before till I lived there. Yeah. Like, I don't know how, like... You hear about it not raining, but you just don't believe it until you go there. Just, right. Wait, it just doesn't rain. Like, I was there and for a whole... it's not humid. I was there for a whole month. I think it had, like, a a Florida torrential downpour one time at night, and then it still didn't rain at all. Like, it just doesn't rain there. So, yes, if you want to skateboard and have a surreal lifestyle, skate every day, live in California. Yeah. But if you grew up like us, where, like, yeah, it's fun to skate when you could skate, but don't really care to do it every day it's like that's it was weird too though because like there i feel like the community after the session's over there was always like house parties and things going on you know what i mean yeah, like everyone kind of kinda, but like here it's just like you go skate and then you go home yeah you know i don't know well, i mean maybe would, in brooklyn or something that's we would like go that, back out yeah like when we were back in our you know our young buck drinking days like whatever we were doing like we would go skate and then be like, yo, we're going to Mary's? Yeah, we're going to Mary's. So then we would, like, split up, go home, shower, eat, whatever. And then we'd meet up again at the bar later on. You know, it could have just been also, like, the time period in my life. Like, I was probably more f- focused on drinking. Like, I had Todd and Rumney. We were just pounding yeah. four locos. Oh, Rumney was such a four loco drinker, bro. I don't even know how. That <laughs> I just kid... drank it because he loved him and thought it was funny. No, so but, we like, just... that kid wasn't human, bro. Like, I drink a four loco, I have a fucking heart attack. That kid was able to drink, like, three in one night. We would drink two, oh, by God. rule, every night before we went out. Fuck that. That's what we would do at a pregame. I learned my lesson with <laughs> energy alcohol drinks because of the first interview I had on the internet. Which is the worst fucking thing ever. I shouted out the whole West Coast. I was I a real piece it. of shit. So that night or whatever, we did a demo at uh, what was it? Fucking the what Jersey team was it? No. The, oh, drop, drop in. Drop in. There we go. Yeah. So, and that owner was like, "Oh, you're not skating." Like, no, I hurt my ankle, and he had like sparks on deck, like a whole fucking twenty four pack. Twenty four yeah, pack, sparks. 24 oh, pack yeah. of sparks. I had like five of them. <laughs> I was fucking shit faced and so hyped. I was jumping on Jersey Dave, doing stupid shit. That's funny, man. Worst night of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So yeah, that that was a crazy time with Rumney. I was just drinking like we were drinking and he got on Baker, so we were like constantly going out with those guys. Yeah. It was just that kind of image, that lifestyle, you know? I'm just he, glad what you did after I left. Like you guys did all that. Yeah, like, that I mean, we still skated, yeah, yeah, and like, he, we would go out, Four Locos, then the strip club, <laughs> then to a 20-stair curved rail that we're waxing with soap in the middle of the night, and the filmer's also drunk, probably Buckman. He did Buck do Man. that, wasted his first night. Blackout right? drunk, like film <laughs> shitty, dim lighting, like. It's amazing. Yeah, and just unbelievable, like from the strip club at 4 a.m., and. It was just filled with nights and days like that, you know. And kid always had raw talent, but yeah, can't believe that. Uh, uh, yeah, sore subject. Yeah, you know, it was, it was crazy because he had so much talent, and he had he did he made it like he was there. He pretty much did he did the hardest part of the whole thing. He was on Baker and like about to. Yeah, and he didn't make it in the van. You know, yeah, and that's it. He just. <laughs> I guess the drinking, I mean, you get really distracted, what it was. or I feel like sometimes he gets bored, you know, because even before he like left for California, he was talking about going to the army and like, you know what I mean? Like he'll kill something and do amazing, Yo, but he'll also that. just be like, eh, whatever, like I gotta, I had a, know, whatever, do something else. I forgot know? that that happened. You just brought up a fucking yeah. memory s- scan right now. So <laughs> he... You know, he's really big on his family. He's got protect my family tattooed across his chest. So, yeah, you know, it's, the Rumney family is definitely not a family like you want to fuck with. But he was always big on, like, taking care of his little brothers, his mom and everything. 
And I remember he wasn't making money. So he was like, yo, I'm going to go into the military. And this is where it got really weird for me because the last thing I expected in life was to be somebody's reference. Yeah. <laughs> like me out of all people. So I get a phone call, random phone call when I think I was actually, I got into Consiglio's truck in Utah. Okay. Like right after I left LA, I left you guys there. And it was from like some kind of fucking FBI field agent that was like covering references in regards to Pat. Okay. And he was asking me like, what do I think of? Like, you know, is he a good person? Like this, that. And I basically like, I don't know. If, I don't remember what I said. I have no idea. I think I shut him down. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I, yeah. I was like, yeah, dude, you could probably take that kid into war and he'll win it for you. But like, I don't think you should take him. Like, he's got another thing in this world. It's called skateboarding. Like, let it be. Yeah. But I didn't know they did that. It was like funny. He had so much natural talent. One day we were, we went to that famous 18 stair rail and he was just floating alley back when 80s over it. And I was just like, Blown away. But that's kind of the reason why I moved back home from California was because it became just about going with Pat to meet up with the Death Wish guys. Like, that's what everyone's life became. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just like, all right, Pat's going skating. We have one car. We're hopping in and like, that's it. You know, and that kind of got boring or old for me. You know, I mean, I never like being a tag alonger. For me with those dudes, it was funny that like really... I mean, I got to meet and skate with a bunch of them, but the only one that took a liking to me and actually, like, remembered who I was, called me, like, yo, are you skating or whatever, was fucking Antoine. It was, like, the last thing I expected because he's, like, such an yeah. intimidating dude. He is super intimidating. But, like, the first when... time I he okay. isn't, sorry, he has an energy around him, like... You don't know what's going to happen. And you never shit. Like, you feel, I felt on edge, like, when I was meeting him. Like, yeah. you don't know what the fuck could go down. It's crazy. But the funny thing is, <laughs> Antoine is actually really innocent. He's yeah. just easily um, influenced by everything around him. And the thing is, as I got to know him, I found that out about him and realized that, like, yo, this dude is the shit. Like, he's always happy. He's yeah, always he's down the to skate. Best dude ever. And he was always, like, at least in that era of our lives, like, he was always, like, the life like whenever he would show up somewhere it'd be like you know fuck it like yeah where's the beer let's go like you know it was funny <laughs> but yeah dude he was the best that's amazing yeah antoine definitely a character I mean, he's back i think he's back skating and he's saw, sober yeah, right? he's killing it yeah he's super sober yeah that's because i don't think i would be skateboarding right now if i wasn't sober i mean maybe here and there not once like in a, a month or something maybe if that but yeah, once I had taken that away, it just kind of like, what else am I going to do? You know, it just like freed up all that time and also like, you know. I think it's been really funny to see how, I mean, because granted it's before you got sober. It's been fucking eons since I seen you sober. Yeah. And then knowing that you are a very calculated, articulate person and then not really seeing how because you were always calculated but you never applied that to skating i, I never applied it to anything but now you <laughs> now you are and Trying that's to, that's what i am i've noticed mostly like dude the fucking tricks you're doing are ridiculous like what'd you put on instagram yesterday the switch tray flip pivot so, yeah front side pivot fake uh, yeah dude you would have never thought of that when you were younger or at least no. like drunk yeah you would have never thought of that drunk <laughs> You it's came the up ramp, with... man. I fell in love with the mini ramp. It well, opened up a whole are... new world for me. That mini ramp is like our sandbox. That shit is the best. It's true. I love that mini ramp. So lucky to have had that thing. It's that they rebuilt it the way it was originally. Yeah. It's best you know, shit. it's it's interesting. I was thinking about this the other day because I went to a skate park in Greenport and it has the only vert ramp in all of Long Island. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then I was like, wait, it's so it's, dangerous. It's tough, like for people to. That's probably why there's no vert skaters. Like, I feel like you need to grow up right next to a park that has that type of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, your environment shapes how you skate. Yeah. Definitely. You know, I learned that from that trip going all over the States. It's like, I was lucky to have that ramp. It's like second nature, you know, just skating Yeah, I a mean, ramp more now. More or less, you know? like, I feel like we had it, you know, regular. Yeah. We had it the best because that whole wall is frontside for us. Yes. 
So goofy, yeah. if you were goofy and you skated that ramp, you really kind of hated us because it was always like <laughs> we had that. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. But then I think it was up until the point where little Caminelli made me jealous when mm. I saw what he was doing with back five O's across. Yeah. Like you see it. He yanks yeah. the front tail, puts it in the back tail slide or whatever. Yep. The little man rips. He it's does, so man. Mean. So what else, man? Well, all right. So you were living in Brooklyn for a little while, right? After Cali, in, yeah. Yeah, in Bushwick. Mm-hmm. And what was that like? What were you up to? Like, what were you doing there? Um, you writing for Toro or? Oh, this right? is like after after. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh, I lo- yeah, I did move back to BK. There's a mic there. I yeah, moved back go. to <laughs> move back to BK because uh, I don't want to go back to Long Island because Long Island's Long Island. I mean, now I like it, but like I definitely didn't like it yet. Yeah, you know, I didn't like the seclusion yet. Now I'm like older and I love being yeah, to myself. A little and, space, right? So. At the time, I was still trying to stay in the mix, so I was living in Brooklyn, and good looks to Gino and Matt Bell for getting me the gig with Chris Keefe at DQM. That was always really cool. Oh, yeah, that's right. And then, yeah. uh, which also was the first time I ever got to meet Lee Smith, mm. who is probably the best dude to have any conversation with. Okay. Because you're going to get nothing but, like, subtle like this is how it is. Okay. And there's no other way. That's awesome. Like even if you try <laughs> to like debate with him, he will debate or like respond, but it's still that. That's awesome. Best dude. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah, getting to meet that dude was sick. Even like meeting Chris too and like working while well, working for him and then not like when we were skating was two set it was actually two separate Chris's. Mm. He had like business Chris and then friend Chris. Okay. So that was cool. But going out and skating with those dudes was fun and then working. And then, yeah, Rodney at the time was starting Toro and he was like, hey, do you want to ride for me? And I was like, yeah, I mean, you're the homie. I've lived with you for years and yeah, yeah, like whatever. I'm not getting bored from anybody else, nor am I really like, I mean, I like let him know, like, look, I'm not really like skating yeah, anymore for like you know like this is what i want to do like no man you were a huge influence though in the area like people still you know look up to you younger kids and stuff like that so i could see why it makes sense for him like the name you know like in the area bring attention to the brand definitely you know but so skating in i like how you get a little uh i give you a compliment you're like uh... <laughs> Is that really how it was? I though? don't take compliments well either, so really I can't. I can't blame you. I'm not too sure. <laughs> there were so many other kids in the city that were super good. How? What? What do you think of like the city skate scene? Is it like? I don't. You don't. I don't. <laughs> I like. I understand. Well, I was never. I was always like exiled from it. There were certain. Kids, Why? Why do you think? Because I'm a fucking Long Islander, or however they want to see it. Like we're fucking the sixth borough. It's true. They though, do. I think. Even though Jersey yeah. will argue it like, no, we're the sixth borough. Like, no, you motherfuckers are Jersey. <laughs> like, and this goes to stand, like, with all due respect for anybody that is from Jersey, I got no issue with you guys. You guys are all way chill. But, like, no, you're fucking Jersey. <laughs> okay. So, so, but, yeah, it's like those dudes would even be, like, cooler than me in the city. Mm. Just because, like, you know, like, I don't know, they just connected better or whatever. Clearly for yeah. us, like, we always got, like that weird look or yeah. vibe from people. It's weird. Cause I don't want to like assume that it's different. You know, maybe I'm just like nervous or something going into the city and skating, but it definitely always felt like a secluded kind of thing. Like we got even, of- even the people in the city that I knew and skated with, I'd see them like a week or two later and they would like not look at you or like oh, not no, that say was hello the, and stuff like that. That was the, I'm mean? cooler than you attitude. <laughs> I used to have fun with that because me and Steve Rodriguez. The cool guy. Yeah, the cool guy. Well, no, no, no. It wasn't necessarily cool guy, but like it was basically if you said hello first, you lost the game. Really? Yeah. I didn't even know that was the game. No, I didn't. I made it up (laughs) as I went along because I noticed I was always always the asshole losing the game. (laughs) Like I didn't give a shit who it was. I'd be like, yo, what's up, dude? Yeah. Like I would always lose. Like, That's so funny. And then a lot of the times, just to act cooler, they'd be like, oh, well, who are you again? And be like, yeah, well, fuck you then. You know, like, whatever. <laughs> but that happened all the time, no matter who it with was. With people, like, surprisingly close to, like, you would hang out with these people. It's like, there's no way you could forget. Come on. Yeah. Like, this. that's bullshit. 
I was just <laughs> drinking and throwing my board at the Tylenol bowl the night before. Yeah. But hey, we're now at Tompkins in the morning and you suddenly forgot who I was. Yeah. That's so funny. You're the fucking coolest. I'm not going to yeah. name names. It was everybody. Everybody yeah. did it. No, it's it an interesting mess. thing, man. I mean, it gets contagious too because then like, you know, you don't want to be the guy. It's like, hey, everyone. So then other people start, I was that start guy. doing it and you're like, I was that guy. oh, I'm not going to just say hello also. And it gets people to start doing it, you know? I basically just was that guy and stopped caring. Like, just yeah. said hello to everybody. I think the only one that Wouldn't didn't... you... I think if you just break that ice and go up to someone and, like, crush it and just say hello, it's just yeah. like, all right, what are you going to do? Just, like, fucking not look and not say hello, you know? The only two dudes that were kind of, like, living there at the time that weren't doing that was Zara and Eli, mm. who were actually yeah. the chillest at the time because whereas if, like, people may have been playing the game with them... They just weren't playing it back, like, whatever. But, like, no matter what, like, whenever I walked up to Zara and Eli, they would respond super well, know who I was, and didn't care about the whole, like, I'm cooler than you attitude, while yet, like, they're definitely the two coolest people at Tompkins. Yeah. But all these fucking random Brooklyn fucking kids are, like, you know, pretending to give you, like, the cold shoulder or whatever. Yeah. Like, and not, not looking at you. If you look at you, you'd lose or whatever. It's yeah, like, that's fucking so too much. funny. I love that. I love that. That's so funny. <laughs> the game, the unspoken game. You can't lose. That's really funny. Well, let's see. So now what? Are you going to film a full video part? For... No, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> no? No way. Come on, man. I mean, Joe, Fa I love how it took me to actually go skating again. And then Joe Face got so pumped, he started an Instagram. Yeah. And like... He's ready to go. He's ready to film a full length video. Even started if it's on whole, an iPhone, he's he's he ready to go. He started the whole hashtag like, you know, Sassa Saturdays. Yeah, Nick which, Sassa touched me once. That's a good hashtag. Either way, I have not <laughs> skated on a Saturday in like fucking three weeks. Sorry, Joe. Yeah. I got shit I gotta do. <laughs> That's <laughs> but, funny. We're getting you out though. I'm playing the elusive game. <laughs> All right, well. I think, let's call it, I think it's been, how long has it been? We think an hour at least? Give or take. Yeah. I don't know, you got any more stories or last words you'd want to say? Any more stories or anything? Between us, maybe. Stay young as long as you can. Hmm. I'm trying. You are, I'm not. <laughs> I'm like, I'm totally like ready for a gray beard. I have actually a good last question for you. So... What would you tell the younger self that was like pursuing skateboarding or doing what you're doing? Like, like from if what I would have been know able to now, tell me? Yeah, like what would you tell the younger you? Shut up. <laughs> 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 like just shut the fuck up. That would be the only thing I would have been able to tell myself. As far as kids these days, <laughs> I don't know. These kids are way better than me at fucking saying the right thing. But then I love how, just to say this real quick. Yeah. Like – Back when I was a cocky little shit, it wasn't cool. Like, you couldn't have a skate career. Now, you could be a cocky little shit and people find it funny. Mm. And I think I got robbed. It's <laughs> true. It is. You know what? That is a good point. You know why? Because, yeah, you could. It's funny because people, like, you could just be this crazy character that, like, is kind of a dick. Yeah. And no one really cares. And that person will still continue to do well. And, like, no one even cares. Yeah. But back then it was, like, yeah, I guess not as accepted or what? No, nah, it was just basically, I like, guess you oh, know what it is? There's a thing around you're not allowed to pass judgment nowadays. You know what I mean? You almost get scrutinized for passing judgment on something. Yeah, it's just for Maybe? the week. I don't know. Like, fucking pass your judgment, bro. Spit your opinions. <laughs> Who cares? I think it's funny. Well, you know, yeah, if you... But you, the thing you is, lose the game now if you speak. I lost it. I lost it 100%. Like, all people had to do was watch that one fucking interview, and my life was ruined anyway. I love that interview, man. I would show that to every person. Please don't. Even though now it's, like, fucking Did happening. you, like, contact Google to have that taken down? I, I remember it did. I tried. They wouldn't do it because that other kid fucking <laughs> had it up there. But That's it, great. Yeah, it was just fucking. Well, hell yeah, man. It was awesome catching up with you. It's been a while. <laughs> You're going to film. I'm getting you at least a one minute video part. It's not happening. It's happening. Maybe 30 seconds. I'm going to show the rest up. rest will just have friends. I'll show up at your doorstep again at 7 a.m. just and knock repetitively. 
I'm kind of getting I'm used to you. <laughs> like either way, like the first time I wanted to kill you. Second time I was already making coffee. So I was already like prepared to get fucked by you at the morning. It's actually funny. People have always laughed at that. Like me fucking with you. It's funny. I mean, I won't, I won't <laughs> think you it's, don't laugh at well, all. No, of course yeah, not. That's what makes it me. funny. I think But yeah. when it's first happening to me, I'm fucking livid. And then later on, you'll show me like the video or whatever. And I'll be like, yeah, it's fucking funny. So it takes me a minute. But then again, who doesn't take a minute in the so morning? So many stories just popped in my head. I almost don't want to end it right now. Just thinking about that time I dropped a possum on your stoop. Fuck you for that, bro. That was so <laughs> bad. My mom wanted to fucking kill you. She, oh, man. You literally, all right, so you put a dead possum on my front porch. <laughs> I put it in my truck. I picked them off the side of the road, drove to your house, and left it on your porch. Right. And here's where it gets better. So my mom freaks out because she thinks, like, I did it. Like, Mom, why the fuck would I put a dead possum on my own porch? She has me move it, which is already gross enough. Now I'm touching a fucking dead fucking, yeah. what is it, a rodent? Yeah. Yeah, rodent. I throw it across the street at Dairy Bar, and apparently your ass was watching me from across the street watching, yeah. doing it. And then I went back inside, <laughs> and you went and put the fucking possum back on the porch. And then the next Too morning, good. my mom, like, freaked out freaked again. Out She's again. like, what the fuck are you doing? And then the following two nights later, you guys forked my lawn. That's true. We did. I got a crew of, like, four people. 1,500 and forks. And 1,500 forks, plastic forks, in your lawn. See, my mom was <laughs> my mom was stoked on that one, though. She was pissed at first, she but was, then... Ah, she was stoked after because she just washed all the forks and used it for Memorial Day dinner. Or, you know... Barbecue. Yeah, I, I like that attitude. That's, it was funny. That's good. <laughs> and then, yeah, saran wrapped your car shut. Dude, you also poured baking soda on it. You peeled all my paint. Yeah, I probably wasn't the good at Like, if I knew that that would have happened, maybe I, I don't even know. Just it would have been more When you're funny. young, it's just like, you hear things and you do it, it's funny. Just like, yeah, saran wrap. See, but you were never like, you would do funny shit like that. But it's funny because if you would have like thought more into it, I feel like you would have been better. Like, you should have used bologna and soda. You could have polka dotted my car. <laughs> that is pretty funny, yeah. Like, that's something I did to somebody on Halloween. I'm fucking God, I was such a bad kid. But, yeah, that was really bad. But, but yeah. Saram wrapped my door shut. I had to slice it open. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, yeah. It's not even that big of a problem. It's just funny. No, it's like you it's wake up in the morning to go yeah. to, like, work or go skate, and this is, like, it's, like, what I have to deal yeah. with first. <laughs> It's funny, man. Yeah, we had so many stories like that. It's crazy. That time when you got arrested in Southampton? I didn't want to get into that. Not specific. We'll leave that for another. <laughs> but you said you were Jim Greco, and I said I was Ryan Belmont. Yeah. And then they took you in, and then they put an APB out on me. <laughs> yeah, my mom had to drive all the way to the Hamptons she to get me out. She so yeah, stoked. So stoked. <laughs> Psyched. <laughs> oh, man, it was funny. I got one last one. We're going to cut it after this. All right. Florida, the Florida trip. Which one? Um, I had like five thousand dollars or something. Oh, when you basically I, spent for us to go down to the chair. Or yeah, six. Yeah. I don't remember exactly how much I had, but I had a little bit of money. And um I just Buckman wanted to go film Tampa M or Pro. Tampa Pro. And he didn't my friend Buckman is a filmer. He didn't have money to get down there, so I was just like, Yeah, let's go. Gathered five friends together, but this one Always the hardest to wrangle up. The elusive one. Up showing at, well, I showed up at your driveway. Oh, dude, I was going to work. You made me quit my <laughs> job. That's right. Yeah, so, oh, my God. All right. So you were trying to get me to go, and I didn't want to quit my job. Yeah. And then you blocked me in the driveway at 345 in the morning when I was about to leave for work. And you were like, no, you're coming with us. I'm like, dude, get the fuck out of the driveway. I got to go to work. And then... <laughs> I eventually broke because, like, you know, fuck it, like, at this point. And I remember, thank God my boss was cool because I remember calling him from 95 on the way down. It was already, like, 7 in the morning now. Yeah. And he's like, so, Nick, it's 7 a.m. I'm assuming you weren't, you're not making it today. I was like, yeah, I'm in Philadelphia. He's like, all right, so what are you doing there? I'm like, I don't think I'm going to be back <laughs> until, like, uh, sometime <laughs> next weekend. And he's like, all right, look, Nick, I like you. I'll give you 24 hours. You either tell me you're quitting and it's fine. You can come back to work whenever you get back 
or I got to fire you and you can collect unemployment and do whatever. Like he actually gave me that option. He was like, pretty chill. But I was like, I gave it like not even two more hours. I called him back. I was like, yo, I quit. Yeah. You know, save him the paperwork. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, totally your fault. I quit a job. But the trip was worth it. The trip far was as, worth it. That was a memorable trip, man. Uh, we all fought Buckman in the street. That's that true. was fun. The the car pretty much broke down almost in completely Virginia. halfway. And yeah. we were just like, fuck it. Let's just keep trying to go. I actually... <laughs> <laughs> that was actually the fucking scariest part for me because I didn't know what you guys did after I fell asleep. Mm. Which, mind you, trying to fit five guys in a Chrysler Pacifica is hard enough. Mm. And somehow I managed to fall asleep for the first time in like a day while driving. And when I was awake, the car had broke down and you were like, all right, we're fucked. We got to drive back. So I fell asleep. We were driving back. And I woke up and I was like, where are we? And you were like, South Carolina. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? You got, yep. you were like, yeah, we're going for it. I have no idea how that car to this day finished the trip and yeah. then made it back. Yeah, made it back. It's crazy. Yeah, I think it was Incredible. a piece of, that was. We thought we were all going to be stuck on the side of 95. <laughs> that would have been funny. That's funny, man. That yeah. was a really fun trip, though. Thank you for that. Yeah, oh yeah. It was an amazing time, man. I got so many. There's like five stories I could tell just within that story. Oh, I know. You know, I can go on and I make Buck and cry yeah. right now. I'm sure, like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna get into that. Yeah, we'll, we'll save it for part two. <laughs> no, there's the, yeah, no, yeah, no, I don't want Buckman or Kaylee to hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, it was awesome catching up. I think I'm gonna cut it. Thanks for, oh, thanks for hanging out. Yeah, man. Thanks for being my first guest. I'm psyched to see where this thing goes. I honestly have no idea. Filming it on the phone. You're probably going to lose viewers from this. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Thanks, though, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Oh, I have to fucking piss so bad. Probably see my fucking gut growing while I'm trying to fucking, like, fast forward.